So what's going on guys, Kade is here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Deadblade PvE build in Lost Ark. So in this guide I will show you what abilities and awakening skill you want to get. Then as well I will explain what are the best engravings and cards to use for endgame content. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay and even which stats you need to allocate for PvE so you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how low or high level gear or score your character is, you can easily use this build and follow the step by step guide. So if all this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. Ok so this class has big AOV skills with high damage to kill big mob groups very quickly. She also has good mobility to make the leveling and endgame dungeon farming very easy. Her skills suffer from relatively long cooldowns, so make sure that you group up a bunch of enemies to kill them very efficiently. Normally a dead blade's gameplay is focused around gaining the dead orb meter as fast as possible, then unleashing the blade burst and then repeating the same process all over again. So this meter is separated into three dead orbs. As long as one dead orb is filled you can enter the dead trance, which will immediately reduce the cooldowns of all of your skills and give you access to a new big damage skill called the blade burst. Therefore the playstyle revolves around using high damage skills to build the dead orb meter as fast as possible and then repeating the same process which gives this build a very high sustained damage. Ok so now let's move over to the build itself and these are the skills you want to have. So for the first ability we have the earth cleaver and we spend just 4 levels to unlock the push and then for your rune you want to get the overwhelm. Then for the second ability we have the soul absorber and we use 10 levels to select the swift fingers, fist of darkness and half. And then for your rune you want to get the wealth. Then for the next one we have the spin cutter ability and this time we use just 4 levels to get the open weakness. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the quick recharge. Then for the fourth ability we have the moonlight sonic and we use 10 levels to unlock the fist of darkness, sustain enhancement and shade sonic. And then for your rune you want to get the wealth. Then for the next one we have the dark axle ability and we use 10 more levels to select the swift fingers, the nasty and high axle. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the protection. Then for one of the last abilities we have the maelstrom and this time we use just 4 levels to get the orb control and then for your rune you want to get the focus. Then for the seventh ability we have the void strike and we use 10 skill levels to unlock the orb control, fist of darkness and dark explosion. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the wealth and then for the last and final ability we have the blitz rush. And we use our last 10 levels to select the vital points strike, charge enhancement and shadow rush. And then for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then as well after level 50 for your awakening skill you want to get the flash blink. But if you haven't reached level 50 yet then here is a specific guide on which abilities you should upgrade first while leveling with the dead blade. And then on top of all this focus on equipping as high item level gear as you can. And then at the end game you should have 450 crit and 1350 specialization. But then again if you haven't reached this point yet then try to have around 70% stats into specialization and 30% stats into crit. Ok so then the way I would recommend to upgrade this build is at level 50 you will get around 250 points. So here is how your build should look like. But then by doing more and more endgame content you will get more points. And then at the absolute endgame this is how your build should look like with all 410 skill points. So at the start you use the 250 points build. And then by leveling up and completing quests you will get more points. So just keep on upgrading your skills and getting better tier runes. Ok so then let's move over to the engravings and you want to get the grudge. This will increase your damage while at the same time putting a debuff on you which will make you take more damage in return. This engraving is highly efficient damage increase even with the penalty. Then the second engraving is the remaining energy and this will allow dead blade to maintain high damage uptime and you will receive free stats when your dead blade meter is out of juice. This engraving is extremely efficient even at level 1. So I would recommend to level all the other engravings first and then lastly this one. Then the next one is called the supercharge and this engraving will increase your damage and attack speed which will work very well with the skills like the blitz rush, void strike and soul absorber. Then for the fourth engraving you want to get the adrenaline and this will provide a easy source of extra crit rate 
In the later tier 2 and tier 3 content, when you have cooldown reduction jewels, then the next one is the keen blunt weapon, and this engraving is a cheap and good option to get extra percent critical damage increase. And then for the last engraving we have the master of ambush, and this will give you a flat percent of normal damage increase. So then in a quick summary, I would recommend to get the top 3 engravings first and then the bottom 3. And then last but not the least, let's move over to your cards, and you want to get the shandy, Azena and Inaina, Ninevin, Vey, Baldur and Tyrain. These cards are an endgame system for maximizing your character, so you don't have to get them right away, but these cards will optimize your damage output in PvE even more. I have done a bunch of tests for this build and this was the best and most optimal card set. Ok so then moving over to the gameplay and if you have played this class, while leveling you will be very familiar with the skills so I will just give you a short description. So the spin cutter skill has two purposes, he hits the enemy with the open weakness effect and you can use it to move away from AOE skill or to close the gap between you and the enemy. Then the Dark Axle skill is another great movement skill that allows you to jump over the bosses or mobs to escape their attacks or to get behind them for the extra back attack damage. Then the next three skills called the Soul Absorber, Blitz Rush and Voice Strike are your main three DPS skills, which will do a lot of damage and make your orb meter go up very quickly. Then the next ability is called the Moonlight Sonic, and this is a huge AoE circle in which you do a lot of damage and I mostly use this when all of my enemies are grouped up. Then the Earth Cleaver is used for short gap closing that also deals damage. Then the Maelstrom skill provides a self buff which increases the dead orb meter speed for a short time and additionally because we have selected the level 7 tripod called the Dark Order, this skill provides a additional attack speed buff for your party members. And then lastly our Awakening skill called the Flash Blink is a good damage dealer that does three things all at once, which are that he fills up the dead orb meter a lot faster, he gives us damage and mobility as well. Ok so then moving over to your skill rotations and I will give you two general options. So the first option which is the long one, I use for endgame bosses and for a lot of grouped up enemies. So we use at the start the spin cutter and then the maelstrom and then the rest damage skills. And by our first skill rotation we should have around 2 to 3 dead orbs filled. So then we activate our special mode. And by attacking the enemy it will automatically consume all of our orbs and our character will perform the dead blade burst skill which will deal massive amounts of damage. And then for the second option I have a short rotation, which is meant for smaller mobs or single bosses. So this time we use again the spin cutter, then the maelstrom, then the soul absorber, then the void strike and then we finish with the moonlight sonic. So now in my last and final conclusions for this build. The dead blade focuses on back attacking because of the spin cutter's open weakness tripod that gives us a free buff for plus 10% crit rate. So whenever you can, stand behind your enemy while attacking for the free damage increase. Then the reason why we want to get very high specialization stats is to be able to get from 2 to 3 dead orbs in just one skill rotation. And then lastly your main DPS skills which are the Soul Observer, Blitz Rush and Void Strike all work very well with the Supercharge engraving, so make it a priority to get it to max level 3. So overall if you're looking to play the most powerful and high mobility and high damage build, then try this one out and don't forget to have fun. And that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Lost Ark PvE classes that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will catch you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace. I